Hi, I'm Justin Sneddon from the AR team at Niantic and I'm going to quickly run you through uh, the GameBot example. So in ARDK 1.3 we've actually uh, updated our example of navigation which is called GameBoard. We've moved a bunch of the functionality that was just in an example into the core ARDK so that you, you can work with it without having to pull down the examples um, and uh, we've also updated the default example to be slightly more user-friendly. So what I've got set up here is just I've pulled in the ARDK and I've pulled in the examples package and I'll just talk you through it. Rather than building something, you can just dig through it yourself because it's a fairly comprehensive example. So if you go into the examples and you go to contextual awareness game board and you open this example, uh, what you can see when you run this is a very simple uh, agent uh, simulation. So I'll just run it in editor here. Press run AR. Um, it's using uh, mesh mocking, so it will bring in a, a, this this bluish mock mesh here. And what you're seeing on the ground here is all these green tiles being made. So this is what we call the game board. It's it's building a dynamic navigation mesh uh, from from the meshing output. So very quickly we move around a little bit, and it's uh, made this. All of this area is now walkable for a, a creature, or so, or you can, you know, you can run a star on it and, and move from A to B. Um, if you press place, it will take a second or so, and it's 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 uh, placed a yeti somewhere. It will show up and go done. So he's placed. Um, and if I click somewhere in our example, he'll walk there. So it follows the the, the pathing and it understands how to get to where it's going. Does a little jump there because he saw there's no ground, so he hopped over. Um, so there are a couple of different modes. You can turn off jumping if you don't want it to. So it, he would not jump, he'd walk around. But uh, jumping is kind of cute and cool. So there you go, little little Yeti, he walks around and he does stuff. It's got an example of, of click to, to move him. Um, there's also a, uh, similar to the old example, you can press call and he'll walk to you wherever you, where you are. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the example. It's quite cool. If you run it on your phone, it will automatically uh, build all of this out uh, to, to work on device for you. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. I just need to uh, do, do a quick fast forward while I build it to the phone. So as you can see here, it, the game board is being built out as I move around the, the room. It's uh, built out some tiles on the couch there and also on the floor we can place our creature and tell it to navigate through the scene and because we have these two different planes it understands to jump between them so he jumps up on the couch and moves about and you know, <laughs> I can't be fell down but um, yeah we can have the creature move uh, around all over the place and uh, jump across uh, across these areas as I move around further through the house you can see that I can tell the creature to follow me and it'll just pass to where I am you can do things like, uh, you know, just keep moving around. It'll keep building a, a bigger space. I was here to get in the kitchen. I needed to move a bit uh, further forward to, to make the nav mesh exist there. But now I can move away from where the creature is and just sort of call it to me and it'll, it'll navigate neatly through the house. Obviously, there's a nice effect here allowing you transfer effects to see through the walls there using just the meshing uh, information. Uh, in any event, as you can see, we've got some very cool uh, navigation ability here with the, the creature, and um, you can obviously turn off our debugging stuff if you, do, if you don't want all the green tiles. You could also get rid of the, the meshing effect that we've put here that gives you that transparency that you can see. Um, but uh, it's quite cool. The creature can navigate naturally through your environment, and all of this works in real time. Oh, so, so just full disclosure, I've been using an animated version of the, the Yeti prefab. You can change the creature that you're spawning here in, inside the game board uh, example manager. You just change this uh, prefab to be whatever you want. You can use a cube, you can use one of your own characters or our Yeti. Uh, I, I made an animated version of the, the Yeti by just uh, extracting it from the, the uh, provided Voyage app. So if you really want an animated Yeti, you can go to the Voyage app and export that package and pull it in here and then swap it out. If you run the default one, it looks a bit more like this, so I'll just show you. It's exactly the same, he just doesn't walk. Um, so quickly click run AR, uh, scan the space, do, 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 do. place our Yeti. Done. And then if we tell him to move, you can just see it's moving the same, it's doing all the same things, it's just you don't get the nice walk cycle. Um, so yes, in my the reason why you'll see the rest of my video having a nice walk cycle is literally I've just changed out this agent for one that has a an animator and uh, some clips on it, which uh, is not is it all standard Unity stuff that you, you can do uh, to swap it out for your own creature. 
So let's have a, a quick look through the code now so you can see how this works. It's um, a fairly straightforward setup. You have a couple of files here in, in the folder. So if we come back to Unity and we have a look. So we've got our example manager. So from the ARDK, there is now this uh, manager class. And what this one does, if I just open it up, uh, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. But mostly what it's trying to say is telling the game board system to scan at a certain rate. So that's what all of these uh, different setups here are for. Um, so you come through here and it's saying, you know, how, how big are the tiles, how much slope to work uh, work with, at what rate should I be scanning? So, you know, every few frames, how far away from the camera should I scan? So you can make these numbers bigger and, and faster to get uh, more updates more frequently, but obviously that costs more uh, CPU time. So the default's pretty good and it'll work. If we quickly look through the class, I'm not going to go through everything in it. You can do that uh, at your leisure. There's a lot of accesses here, but some of the key things I'll point out. So there's typical stuff to just start up and you know create a game board and things. So this update function, which we're just calling from the, the, the frame here, which is basically saying, control some inter intervals, call this update, comes in here and it basically says, call this scan function. And that's the thing that's building the, the, the nav mesh for you. So it's by continually looking around where the camera is and, and, and rebuilding out that dynamic uh, navigation mesh. So that's quite important. Um, quite important to the, the, the system here. And essentially we're just passing the origin, which is you know where, where you currently are to it constantly and it updates. Another class that's quite important is this other one called Game Boy Agent. Um, so this is doing your creature movement. Um, so I'll just move that away quickly. So jumping around a lot. In here you can see we've got the Game Boy Manager running. We've got this example manager, uh, which is also running. So this is the this is the code we give you uh, to explain how, how to leverage some of this stuff. So uh, in our example here, there's two, two files. There's Game Board Example and Game Board Agent. The, the, the Example Manager is just there to do all your, your sort of UI stuff. It's got the buttons in it. So, and it's got the, the, the when you click how to handle placement. So if you look through this file, you'll just see some stuff about, you know, touch. Where have you clicked? Do a raycast, find that position, and tell an agent to move there. So the agent's the actual important thing. You can think of this file as essentially your UI, your glue to make things work. So if we then look at the uh, Game Board agent, uh, this is a really quickly put together, a simple example of a, of a movement uh, agent. Uh, you'll see that the, it starts up, it makes a configuration, which is something Game Board needs to just say, can this creature jump? Can it not jump? What angles is it allowed to walk on? Um, all that sort of stuff lives in, in this class. Uh, and then essentially there's a little factory pattern for, for listening for when the Game Board was made so that you can capture the the game board itself because there's some useful queries on the game board object so it's worth setting up this catching it and uh, keeping it stored uh, when you come in here we've got this set destination function just to say where would you like to move uh, you're essentially saying create a creature drop one of these agent classes on on that creature and then you can call set destination on it and it'll move to that to its best uh, ability to get there it's a little state machine in here to say am i moving or not uh, am i idle and then it's just using coroutines to do uh, all of all of the things that it does so there, there's um one for moving and one for jumping essentially so you get this movement routine which is essentially saying go from the point that i am at to the point i want to get to and follow a path so through uh game board itself when you say set destination sorry i'm jumping around a lot here uh set destination it'll call the game board to say hey find me a position to start at to, so first it's just checking you know is my creature in a, in, on the board if it's not you want to move them onto the board uh, and then you, you basically say oh well, you've asked to go to this destination let's make a path so it just builds a waypoint path from the tiles that were there and then it passes that into this coroutine called move so move is just going to uh, linearly interpolate the position of the creature between those waypoints so it just fires off a thread coroutine uh, called move which is in here and all this is doing is saying, hey, you know, until I get to the end of my path, just move me along each point in that path. So it'll lurk towards each position. And it's doing some nice things, like you can tell it to rotate your object to face the direction. That's how the creature turns to go the direction it's looking. And when you get near uh, one of the waypoints, just go to the next one, essentially, until you're done, and then stop. Uh, so 
that's literally all it's doing. This sort of very simple creature logic. Uh, you obviously will need more something more complex than this when you write your your full game. But as a starter, this is a pretty pretty simple, straightforward thing to look at, and you can build from here to start adding more and more um, bits of logic as you need them. Uh, essentially, you, you've got your movement agent that's very basic that you could use. You can then start to write your creature logic about what you wanted to do and how you wanted to get to places. And that's all provided for you as an example here that you can just uh, dig into and start working with. Uh, with all that said, uh, please f have a play with it. Um, it's very, very cool and uh, very nice. And it, it, it just works in the editor, which is also quite good because it means you can start to build things out. Uh, as I said before, this mesh here is a mock mesh. Um, let me show you that. If uh, you've looked at the, the various meshing tutorials, I'm sure one of them has this in it, uh, which is you can uh, do a scan of your room and you can save that. You can also make a sequence of scans if you want it to sort of show up over time so that it simulates you moving through a space. Uh, if you go to the, the standard meshing example, one of the buttons in there is save the mesh and it writes out one of these files, which you can then get off your phone drop into your scene and use, or you could just use the one that we ship, which is just a scan from one of our developers' rooms uh, that you, you can uh, pretend to walk around in. Uh, in any event, this is a, a very, very cool example and uh, something you should uh, play with if you have time. Thank you very much for listening.